Okay, I want to walk through creating a project in MP Lab and importing the serial UART library that I've developed. To begin, I want to go ahead and start a new project. And so we want to make sure that this is a standalone project. Uh, 6512L, that's what's on the Cerebot board. Um, I'm going to browse to my Cerebot part that's plugged in. Uh, I'm going to choose the C compiler. Um, we're going to give this a name. Uh, make sure that it creates it in the right directory uh, and hit finish. So the other part of this project that I need is the serial UART library that I have here on GitLab. And so the project name is compi pick32 UART and um, there's a subdirectory in here that I'm really interested in um, but I'm also interested in the uh, initial main and config files. So to do that, I want to uh, go to clone, and I want to clone, and in here, um, we're going to do that. I just want to check it out uh, as a read only. I don't want to make any changes. Right, so what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to add existing items. Um, in this case from folders and um, we're going to go up a directory we're going to navigate to the files that I just created here in MP Lab projects um, pick 32 UART and we want the UART files and what's interesting about this is microchip and NetBeans uses these virtual folders for things and so if I look at the actual SD card test project file uh, the files tab um, these files are there but they aren't actually copied into my project so if I look at the actual location of these files we see that they're PIC32 UART, UART. Um, and so the UART files are there they're just not there, if you know what I mean. Um, they're linked to a different directory. So now if I were to update the GitLab repository and pull new files down, um, I can recompile this and fix bugs and um, this project would just get the benefit of that. By the same virtue, um, what I want to be able to do is use the files tab here and I want to create a, I want to call this Cerebot. The Cerebot directory is going to hold um, my config files that I'm going to create. And let's see how this is going to work. So I want to be able to configure the microchip part um, the way I want it to for this particular board. And so we're going to go to our configuration bits. And I want to be able to roll through here. I know the primary PLL on the board is 8 megahertz, and we're going to divide that by 2 to make it 4 megahertz. Multiply it by 20 to get it to be 80 megahertz. Um, I'm not doing anything with USB, so we can leave that off. Um, the output PLL, we're going to divide by 2 to get it back down to 40 megahertz. Um, I want the primary PLL, so that's going to be the primary oscillator um, going through the PLL path. Um, I, we can leave the secondary oscillator on. Um, the primary oscillator is going to be a clock chip as opposed to a crystal. Um, I do not need to output that to any other devices. We're going to divide the 40 megahertz clock by 2 to make it 20 megahertz. And I'm going to turn the watchdog off. And the Cerebot board uses PGD, PG2. Um, and so everything else there is fine. So we're going to copy and paste that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a file in the Cerebot directory um, called config.c and paste those in. So these are my configuration pragmas. I also know that the I like to have a header file uh, that holds config definitions that are unique to a particular board. And so oops. 
so this will be everything in between here becomes our uh, configuration definitions. And So those are my uh, config settings. We had chosen a 40 megahertz clock and a 20 megahertz clock. And so now what I want to do is I want to make sure that that matches. And so um, as kind of a reminder, we're going to include our config.h. And then I'm going to put an if def or if um, get system clock um, does not equal um, 40 megahertz. I'm going to throw an error. Does not equal 20 megahertz. Or we could even notice that we do our div 2. Um, So really what ends up happening in these projects is at some point someone's going to come along, they're going to make a change to something, they're going to change one of these config bits, or worse, they're going to just change the config file. And this is just an opportunity to detect where the mismatch has happened. Right? So these two files, the config.c and the config.h, are now in a Cerebot directory. And what I want to do now is I want to um, create a new logical folder. And that logical folder, I'm going to rename to Cerebot. And I'm going to add existing items from this folder. So those two files get added to here. And the next thing I need to do is I want to go to my project properties and I want to change my configuration. So instead of configuration being default, I'm going to rename it to become Cerebot. And so now I have to kind of um, exit out. So we hit apply, OK. And now I can go back and the Cerebot board is still PIC 460. The Cerebot board is using the connected Cerebot. It's using the XC um, compiler. Um, so now if I go back in, um, it refreshes the display. And in particular, we can kind of roll through here and verify that we have um, all the options set uh, appropriately. So for example, under common include directories, I would want to include the Cerebot directory. And what will happen now is when I go to build my program, because this configuration, the Cerebot configuration, um, uses that, uh, it will actually include the config C and the build path, as well as the UART C. Um, and actually, while I'm, since we're doing the UART directory, we should probably also include the UR folder. Actually, I think it will already be. We'll find out. All right, so now I need a main. Um, oh, see, now it tried to create it in the wrong directory. We'll make sure it goes in the right spot. So here's our main. Our main is going to include Cerebot config.h. It's going to include UART. And I want to include I know I have to do a UART init. Um, all UART programs have to do that. And then I have to do the int 
system and enable system multi vectored in. And as a test to make sure that everything works, um, we're going to look for that. All right, so it's still not finding the UART file. And so what I need to do is to modify oops, my configuration. And make sure I browse to the UART directory and include that folder. And now we see that the configuration is Cerebot. And we get all these weird, stupid errors about the plib functions. So we're going to go in here and define those. So property um, under GCC. I want to do preprocessing, preprocessor macros. Okay, and we'll try it again. And so I get an error actually in my um, library here um, because I do not have standard IO included. So let's fix that. And I have another error here that says that IPL2 is deprecated, and we should do IPL2 auto. Um, now, this error always pops up, and it says that a heap is required. So I need to go back to my project preferences. And the, the tool that's responsible for organizing the memory is the linker. And so I'll give a small heap. It actually doesn't need to be a big heap. Like 2,000 bytes ought to be sufficient. Um, that error is actually a false error. It happens during UART init, coming from the TX buff size and the RX buff size. So that should just be enough for our UART. And it doesn't work. Something's wrong. So this is real term. Um, real term is showing garbage on the screen and not my hello world program. So the thing we just need to double check now is to make sure that the um, uh, all the clock settings are right and also that the baud rate setting is right. So here in UART init, when I'm looking at the baud rate, um, I see if right now the baud rate's at 38400. And I wanted that really to be at 115200. So we rerun. Ah, so now it's working, but I'm getting the stair stepping uh, deal. And that is because real term is interpreting the um, new line as not a carriage return new line. So if I come back here, we can do new line mode, and I get my carriage return and a new line all at once. And so now my program will spit hello world forever and ever and ever. Thanks for watching part one.